Hi, this is David with David's Tutorials. In today's video, I'm going to give you three tips to mastering the WordPress media library and tell you why you should pay attention to this. As we get started, I'm going to be assuming that you know the WordPress media library and how to use it. If you don't know that, then this video won't be much use to you and you should probably study that before watching the rest of this video. Tip number one is to resize, to rename all images before you bring them into WordPress. We're looking right now at my Windows Explorer's window, and I have two images here that we need to take a look at to see what's the difference between them. One of them, of each pair, is reduced in size, and one of them is the original size. Let's take a look a little bit more closely at these images. We can see here that the screenshot for my vlog post number 2355 was initially 1920 by 1080, and that is 4.9 gigabytes in size. Now I reduced the size of that to a maximum of 800 pixels wide by 420 pixels tall, and that is only 783 kilobytes, not even 20% the size of what it was initially. Now, this Google Drive logo, it was initially 1600 pixels by 1384 pixels and took up 91 kilobytes of space. I reduced the size to only 500 pixels by 433 pixels, and that only takes up 26 kilobytes of space. For all practical purposes, you don't need an image any wider than 1200 pixels to display on any computer screen. If you look at an HD TV, you'll see that it's only 1280 pixels wide by 720 pixels tall. And on an HD TV, a 55 inch TV will be crystal clear at 1280 by 720 pixels. So if you're gonna show it on anything smaller than a 55 inch television, then you do not need anything more than 1200 pixels wide. So having 800 pixels by 450 pixels is perfectly fine for any size screen from a large computer screen all the way down to a phone. And for a logo to only be 500 pixels wide, you don't need anything bigger than that. So tip number one is to resize your images before uploading them into the media library. And the second part of that is to rename them. How many times have you looked at the pictures you have on your computer and you'll just look at the image of the picture and you say, oh, that's good. And you grab it and you drag it and you drop it into the media library. And then you look later in the media library and the file name of that image is something like IMG1326B. That doesn't tell you anything about the image. And when you go to search for it later, you cannot search for it by file name. So we don't want to accept the default file name as it comes out of our camera. When you resize it, you should also rename the image so there's something in the file name that tells you what's in the picture. Because if you look at it and all you see is the file name, you're gonna be very glad that it doesn't say IMG1326B. So that's tip number one. Resize and rename your images before bringing them into the media library. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take these two images here, the small ones, and I'm going to drag them into a media library on a website that I have already set up for a client. Now, of course, the way to add an image to a media library is you open it up either in File Explorer or in Finder on a Mac, and you select the two images. In this case, I want the smaller images, so I had to hold down the Control key, that'd be a Command key on a Mac to select the independent images, and I just click on them and drag them over to the media library, which you can see then turns blue and it starts uploading both images. And there are those images. Tip number two is for the images, you need to add metadata. Let's look at what the metadata is. In your media library, if you click on the image, that will bring up that image in the attachment details window. And that attachment will then have over on the right-hand side, some metadata. Let me zoom in a little bit so I can see it a little bit better the metadata that you pretty much should also put in all the time is the alternative text, also called the alt text. Now the alt text is what screen readers read 
when a person who is blind or hard of vision uses a screen reader to view your website or actually to listen to your website. So the alt text for this image would be photo of David in vlog post number 23-55. And that's all you really need to do. Now, to change to the next image, you come up to the arrow keys in the upper right-hand corner of the image, the attachment viewer, and you click to it, and you see we have the next image. But now I come back to the first image, and you can see the alt text I put in there was already there. So pretty much everything you put in as an alt text image is going to be saved. Now, Generally, the title will default to the file name of the image. You can see here it has a title of 23-55 screw shot 800 by 450. And up here, the file name is the same thing. Notice also at the top, it will give you your image dimensions, 800 by 450. You can change the title. And the title is something that may show up a little bit later in your websites. And so we could just say, David in vlog post 23-55. There we go. Now to save it, all you have to do is either close it or move to the next image. And here's the next image. And we can see that this is, we're going to put in the alt text, image of the Google Drive logo. And that's all I think we want to put in there. We're going to come back here and we're going to look at the other metadata. Now you can also put in a title, which we've done, and you can put in a caption, which is another piece of information you can have, and you can put in a description. And I'm just not going to do that right now because I don't think we need it because we're really just going to delete these photographs, these images. So I'm going to close that, and we now have the metadata done for this image. Okay, we now have tip number one, which is to resize and rename your images before you upload them into the WordPress Media Library. And we have tip number two, which is to add metadata to the images. Let's get on to tip number three, which is to use the search field in the Media Library when you want to find an image. And the reason I say that is because if you have more than a page full of images, which we have here, if you look down at the bottom, it says load more, and I'm going to load more right now. And you can see it loads a whole bunch more. And you go down to the bottom of that one, and it says load more, and it's going to load a whole bunch more images. And you go down to the bottom. And this is a website that has a whole bunch of images loaded on it. And if you need to find one particular image, when you're looking through a page of images, that's no big deal. But if you're looking through 300, 400, 500 images, it could take you forever to find them. And that's why you need to enter the metadata. Because when you enter the metadata, you can then come up to the search field and type in anything you want. Then if they find it in the metadata or in the file name, it will show up. Now let's just look for David, D-A-V-I-D. And now we only have three images to choose from. And that's all the three images that have in their metadata the name David. Now, if you had all of your images uploaded and they had img6829a.jpg, then you would have a much more difficult time finding an image. So that is tip number three to use this search field. And by the way, if you want to clear the search field, just delete what's in there and you're going to get all of your images back. And that's what we have as tip number three. Now I have a bonus tip for you. This is actually tip number four, but it's bonus tip number one, especially if you have a website that has a ton of images on it. If you have an image that you're no longer using, if for example, you put it on a page and then you deleted the page or you replace the image on that page, delete any unused images. This will save you a ton of space on your server's drive, and it'll keep you from perhaps running out of space a little bit later. To delete an image, you just click on it to bring up the 
attachment details and here down in the right hand corner you will see delete permanently you click that and you're going to get a confirmation box and that will be deleted permanently and here's the other image i just uploaded and i'm going to click on delete permanently and confirm it and now those two images are gone and they are no longer taking up space on my server now i have one more bonus tip for you and this tip is for anybody who uses the divi builder theme or plugin if you're not using the divi builder theme or plugin i highly recommend you go check out the plugin which gives you all the elements of the theme but it doesn't interfere with your other the themes you are using but if you can get started using a divi theme i highly recommend it because it is very powerful and they're improving it all the time now if you're on the divi theme you need to go get the Divi Image Helper by Nelson Miller at PA Creative. I'll put a link to it down in the description section below. And this is not an affiliate link. It's just I use it and I like it and I'm recommending it. Let me show you what you can do with it. I have several examples of an image. This is all the same image, but one of the things you can do is this is the original image in a four column spread. This is the image in a one column spread. You can see it's a big image. Let's go ahead and exit the Divi Builder because the changes in this plugin do not show up when the Divi Builder is active. This is the original image. This is a square image. This is the landscape four to three, the landscape three to two, the full size image. This is the portrait image. This is a different portrait image. This is a different portrait image. And I just want to show you some of the things you can do. Notice this one has the title and the description. How you can do that, now I'm going to go ahead and enable the Divi Builder. And let's just take the landscape 4 to 3 image. And we will see about getting the extra information, the metadata to display. If you click on the cogwheel to get to the image settings, you scroll down here until you see elements. Notice here now we can see enable image title. Let's say yes. Enable image caption. Yes. Enable image description. Yes. And I'm going to click on OK on that one. I'm going to save those changes. And then I'm going to exit the Divi Builder. And then we will look at this landscape 4 to 3 image. And you will be able to see what has been done. Notice we now have the image title, the image caption, and the image description right there. And those are able to be formatted in the size and the color and the font that you want. That's one of the things you can do. Now let's get back into the Divi Builder. I'll show you one more thing. And you're going to really love this. We're going to go to the full size image down here, the one column image. I'm going to click on the cog wheel to bring up the image settings dialog. I'm going to go to the elements and enable the title and the caption and the description they're going to be the same as in the other image but now I'm going to come over here to the design and let's go ahead and say the overlay will be yes and that will overlay those elements on top of the image but since they're kind of in a blue right now on a dark background let's see if we can make the text image title text let's come down here and let's see if we can turn it white okay that's good. All Fs. That makes it white. Let me zoom in a little bit. I'm not going to change the size of that very much right now. Well, here we go. Caption text. Let's make that yellow just so we can set it apart. And let's go ahead down to the description text and we'll make that white again. That's not white. That's white. There we go. Now we have white, yellow, white on the text, and we will see it overlaid on here once we save it. And we exit the Visual Builder, and we will scroll down to that big one, and we see white, yellow, white, and it overlays that. And you can see what we have as far as an overlay goes. And of course, you can definitely format this text however you want. You can give it spacing from the top, from the bottom, whatever. But that is the Divi Image Helper by Nelson Miller over at PA Creative. And that's one of the final tips that I have for you.
So now you have the three tips to mastering the WordPress media library. Tip number one, resize the image and rename that file name before you import it into WordPress. Number two, add the metadata, at least the alt text and probably the caption or the description or something else that lets you know what's in that image. And tip number three, use the library search field to find the image that you want to put in your post or on your page. And don't forget the bonus tips as well. I'm not even going to go over those right now. You can go back and watch them if you want to. And if you thought this was a good video, please give me that thumbs up. And YouTube will know to recommend this video to other people. And it will encourage me to keep making these videos. Also, give me a comment down in the comment section down below. And let me know what you thought of this video. And if you're a subscriber already, thank you so much. I appreciate every single one of you. And if you're not, go ahead right now. Click that subscribe button and the bell icon. And YouTube will let you know when I post another great video right here on David's Tutorials. Meanwhile, everybody have a wonderful day. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.